Today we've got your full in-depth review of Sony's 50th full-frame E-mount lens. It's the 70-200 F4 GOSS Macro Mark II. Yes, it's finally here, the updated 70-200 F4 from Sony, and man, this thing does not disappoint. I'm excited to tell you all about it, guys. Here's some basic specs to get you going. And by the way, if you end up liking this video and it helps you out, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. So we're diving in and talking about first who this thing's for. Well, Sony thinks it's for a semi-professional or a hobbyist, and I kind of agree. It's a very versatile lens that you can grow into. It's not quite as fast as some of the more expensive G Masters or an F2.8, for example, but it does hold its own in terms of performance and optics, as you'll see. So some standout features of this guy is, of course, the macro capabilities. It's a half macro at the entire focal range, which is really cool, with a very close minimum focus distance. So you can shoot macro stuff, you can shoot sports, wildlife, landscape, this thing does it all and it does it well. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of examples of some different things that you can shoot. But first, let's talk quickly about the build and features of this lens. As you can see, a great size. It's actually 15% lighter and shorter than its predecessor. So a great size. It weighs just over 700 grams, so it's not a huge burden. And in terms of the quality, it really feels like a G Master lens. It's just right. It feels well balanced. The quality's there in terms of the materials used. Um, of course, it does extend as you zoom a little bit here, but it's got a pretty short throw, I, I have to say. I'm quite impressed by that. Up front, you've got your focus ring here, and at the back is your zoom ring. So. Uh, everything kind of fits in your hand. It feels nice and intuitive. And in terms of buttons and switches, we've got not one, not two, but three customizable focus hold buttons. We've got an automatic manual focus switch. We've got a full-time manual focus override switch, which is a fantastic feature, which I love to see on pretty much any lens. Next, we've got a focus limiting switch with three positions, and of course, optical steady shot or image stabilization built in with three modes that works extraordinarily well. On the other side here, we've got a little lock switch so it doesn't creep when you're on the move. And um, that's pretty much it for buttons and switches. On the front, you'll find 72 millimeter filter threads along with Sony's patented coatings to help with ghosting and flare, of course. And on the back, a nice metal mount with a rubber gasket for confidence when it comes to weather sealing. Overall, a great little build, a ton of features. The only thing that it might be missing for some people is an aperturing that we're seeing on more and more lenses these days, but it's really probably not tailored towards video, although it could definitely be a video tailored lens. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's gonna shoot everything well, whether you're shooting photos or videos, that I promise you. In terms of building features as a whole, I give this thing a solid four and a half stars. Next, let's dive into what matters, and that's the performance of this guy. I'm happy to say that it does perform extraordinarily well, as you'd expect. Now, in terms of autofocus, it's incredibly quick, 20% faster than its predecessor, utilizing Sony's newest XD linear focusing motors. Again, whether you're shooting photos or videos, this thing is gonna keep up with anything. Now, I shot sports, I shot bugs, I shot pretty much everything, and I really didn't come across a scenario where this thing didn't perform well. So in terms of autofocus, it's just fantastic. When it comes to manual focus, it does have that awesome manual focus override feature, which I absolutely love. Now, when you're talking about manual focus just in general, it is very, very finicky. It moves very quickly. So just to keep that in mind, it feels good though. The overall operation is nice, uh, but in terms of you know really smooth focus pulls and whatnot, you might struggle just a little bit. Here's some examples from my time with this lens, and thanks again to Sony for sending me this lens for review, although they didn't pay me, and everything in this lens is my own opinion. So it's no secret that I am a big fan of macro photography, and anything that can utilize macro and pretty much anything else you wanna shoot is a winner in my books. I love the close minimum of focus distance, and I love the ability to shoot macro. Oh, and by the way, you can use 1.4 and two times teleconverters to actually convert this thing into a macro beast shooting a true one-to-one -one reproduction ratio with the two times teleconverter. And for me, that's one of the coolest features and just something awesome that Sony's decided to add to their lenses. Next, let's talk about the aperture and the optics a little bit. Now it's an F4, meaning it's not the fastest lens out there, but it is enough to produce some beautiful out-of-focus backgrounds. And with nine aperture blades, the bokeh is 
quite nice for me. In terms of low light performance, it's decent. Yes, our modern day sensors are very, very good. So pumping up that ISO a little bit when you need to usually isn't an issue. But just keep in mind, if you're needing something crazy fast, like an F1.8 or something, well, this really isn't gonna compete. Contrast is great and colors are vibrant. And overall, I really like the quality of images that I'm getting out of this lens. Next, let's dive in and pixel peep a little bit and have a look at the sharpness and optics of this lens. So here's a detailed look at the sharpness and the optics of this lens here starting at 70 millimeters wide open at f4. The center of the image is razor sharp and I do mean razor sharp, but the corners are just as impressive. This is honestly one of the sharpest lenses I've ever reviewed hands down. This is insanity. Wide open at f4, very, very impressive. Decent contrast, stopping down to f5.6, we can see the corners brighten up, a li little bit of vignetting disappears there, and the sharpness is actually even better. So the sharpness of this lens is among the very best that I've seen, which is incredible for a zoom lens. Stopping down to f8, now across the entire frame, we've just got a magnificent performance here. So stopping down further to f11, again, completely usable. We'll go up to this corner for consistency and down to f16 here, we can see just a tiny bit of haze, but still magnificently sharp. And we can stop all the way down to f22 here, still a completely usable image, but just a little bit of haze due to diffraction. Overall, just an incredible performance at 70 millimeters. Here we are around the center of our focal range at about 135 millimeters. It's the same story, magnificently sharp in the center and the corners are absolutely mind-blowingly impressive. We can notice a little bit of distortion here, which we'll talk about in a bit, but stopping down to f5.6, we can see that there's not much vignetting here in, in the middle of our focal range and the sharpness is just incredible. Still down to f8, looking very good and continuing down to F11. And once again, it's not until about probably F16 where we see just the tiniest little bit of degradation. And down to F22 here, still completely usable once again. Again, optically very good in the center of our focal range. And here we are at 200 millimeters wide open at f4 and this is where it really matters with a telephoto if you ask me the lighting is not completely uniform because my light is just off to the left a little bit here the center of the image again razor sharp and the corners are just as impressive it's just an amazing feat of optics here at f4 wide open stopping down to f5.6 we can see still very very good and even maybe a tiny bit better but very good wide open so impressive f8 looking magnificent great contrast stopping down again to f11 and down to f16 here we see just a tiny bit of degradation again and once again we can stop all the way down to f22 Still a usable image if you ask me, but just a mind-blowingly impressive sharpness for this lens. A very quick look at distortion and vignetting here. This is wide open at 70 millimeters once again. A tiny bit of distortion here, and there is a little bit of vignetting to speak of wide open at f4. Stop down to f5.6 to see that vignetting improve quite a bit. And I don't have the profile correction at this time, but just make sure you keep in-camera corrections turned on to avoid any distortion that might be an issue for you. Here at 135 millimeters, the distortion is a little bit more pronounced here. We've got some pin cushion distortion, and vignetting now is very well controlled. Stopping down a little bit to f5.6, we see pretty much no change in the vignetting, and there's the distortion. Stopping down to f5.6, we see basically no change in the vignetting. And here we are at 200 millimeters. We still have that moderate pin cushion distortion here. And in terms of vignetting, it's decent. Stop down to f5.6 to see just a tiny bit of an improvement. No deal breakers for me here whatsoever. Optically, very impressive. Congrats to Sony. A quick look at image stabilization shows it's very much welcome, especially out at 200 millimeters, and of course in macro shooting. And this is gonna be a big difference when everything is kind of magnified. And as you can see here, the difference between it on and off is substantial. It does have three modes, so you're gonna be covered regardless of what you're doing, which is great. And it's actually a little bit better than it looks here, just because I'm actually fiddling with that little button and contributing to even more shake than would regularly be there. There's also a bit of wind on this flower, which in hindsight doesn't make it the best for this particular test, but as you can see, it does make quite a dramatic difference. 
So when it comes to performance as a whole, this lens is just a brilliant package. From incredible versatility, macro performance, and utterly mind-blowing sharpness, I give this lens five stars for what it is. Finally, I wanted to touch on the value of this lens. And I think it's really unique, and yes, it does come at a price like any Sony lens. At $1,699 US dollars, it's not the cheapest lens, but it's still considerably less than the G Master, with arguably more versatility due to the macro and the incredible sharpness, with results that can easily pass for professional. Now with the release of this lens, the Mark I is essentially dead to me, being so much better. There's of course the original G Master that you can get at a discount now, but unless you really need that fast f2.8, I think this is definitely the better buy. There's always the budget-friendly Tamron 70 to 180, of course, which doesn't have image stabilization, but does offer great value for money. But this lens for me is just on another level. We're still waiting for Sigma's offering, but for me right now, in terms of value, this lens is solid, and I give it four and a half stars. So there you have it guys, there's my thoughts on the incredible little Sony 70 to 200 F4 GOSS macro. A great addition to the lineup guys, and I wanna say just a great job to Sony for taking a lens that was kind of mediocre in this day and age and adding something spectacular to it and just making it that much more versatile. If you did wanna pick this lens up guys, I will drop affiliate links down below. If you did like this video, hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.